All right, what's up YouTube? Have you ever had a pinched nerve or know anybody that has experienced the pinched nerve in and around the area of the neck or the shoulders? Yeah, it sounds scary and I know that it probably was, but as you will find out later in this video, the whole idea and belief of having a pinched nerve is actually often misunderstood and it's very unlikely to occur unless it's caused by trauma or arthritic age related changes. It is often this belief that if there is a sharp or sudden pain that occurs in this area, often associated with movement, that there could be a pinched nerve. But these things don't just occur spontaneously and I'm going to explain to you the diagnosis of a cervical radiculopathy or an actual pinched nerve in the neck to help you further understand and potentially differentiate if these symptoms are happening to you because if you believe that you have a pinched nerve when in reality all you are experiencing is some type of non-specific neck pain then it can potentially lead to a fear of movement and pain catastrophization which is unnecessary and can even worsen symptoms so Cervical radiculopathy is a diagnosis for those who are experiencing adverse neurological symptoms in the neck and down the arm. There are these nerve-related issues such as motor or sensory loss, meaning strength deficiencies, weakness, absent reflexes for the motor part, and then numbness, tingling, pins and needles for the sensory part. Now, radiculopathy itself comes from the words radicula and pathology. Radicular meaning that it is an issue associated with the nerve root itself. So if you put it together, it's a pathology involving the nerve root in the cervical spine. Cervical meaning the region of the spine in the neck. If a nerve root is sensitive, inflamed, damaged, or compressed, it can cause these neurological symptoms to affect the arm as the nerves that control and provide sensation to the arm originate. From the neck. Then we also have what we call radicular pain, which can occur with or without radiculopathy. It's basically widespread pain in the neck and down the arm. Descriptors such as sharp or searing pain are commonly used as opposed to a dull or aching sensation or type of pain, which may be associated more with a musculoskeletal origin as opposed to a neurological or a nerve related pain. So as I stated earlier, you're very unlikely to experience an actual pinched nerve with without having had trauma or age-related degenerative or arthritic changes in the spine. If all you are experiencing is a pain sort of localized in the neck region, nothing really referring down the arms, it is more likely you may just have a non-specific neck pain. As you can see, the incidence for neck pain in the general population is 27 in a thousand, while the incidence rate for a cervical radiculopathy is way, way more rare uh, at 83.2 in 100,000, according to epidemiological studies. So this is just to give a little bit more reassurance that your more non-sinister, less serious neck pain occurs way more often in the general population than a cervical radiculopathy or a pinched nerve. Moving on to the epidemiology or the most common demographic for a cervical radiculopathy, it's more common in those 40 to 60 years of age, it's more common in men than women, and it's often seen by those with a previous history of a lumbar radiculopathy. So we see that those who have experienced arthritic changes in the cervical spine have a high likelihood that they have already experienced lower back related arthritic changes in the past. And this is more common in those who smoke as well. So now you can begin to see how the whole phenomenon behind nerve root irritation is more related to systemic conditions caused by lifestyle, environmental, or psychosocial factors, rather than being related to traumatic events or overuse injuries. Now, the good news is that the prognosis is very favorable. The expectation for recovery is very good. Around 75 to 90% of all cases resolve on their own without surgery, and it usually takes around four to six months for the pain to resolve. That's fairly reassuring. However, those who present with the more serious neurological deficits, like the motor or sensory loss, tend to take longer to resolve, somewhere between two and three years even. Nevertheless, the most important takeaway is that in most cases, there's no need to worry about surgery. In most cases, we just need to remain calm, level-headed, manage our expectations, and manage the condition by making positive lifestyle changes and using progressive graded exercise as is tolerable. And lastly, the takeaway um, that I hope you would have learned from this video is that neck pain is very common in the 
ordinary general population, whereas pinched nerves are not as common. And symptoms often resolve on their own anyway, so there's no need to worry or panic. Now, surgery is only indicated depending on the severity of symptoms. So those with more severe pain, gross motor loss, absent reflexes, sleep disruption, and a poor response to medication. So those who have a more significant effect um, on their life or, or those who have more severe disability may need to consider having surgery at an earlier stage. Uh, but that's a conversation that you should be having with your healthcare provider and doctor and you know everyone surrounding that. But in most cases, like I showed you, 75 to 90% of people or of cases resolve on their own without surgery. So um, you know, it's very much case dependent and a lot of times it isn't necessary. And lastly, the neck is not fragile, just like any other body part. Um, it's very robust and resilient. It's got lots of soft tissue, connective tissue and muscular tissue surrounding it. So it is not easily damaged and you know, it responds very well to movement and exercise, just like any other part of the body as well. So it's not something that you should be fearing. If you have a pain in the neck, you shouldn't immediately think of putting on a brace to limit your movement. You need to gradually expose yourself to movement as it is tolerable while the body adapts, changes and gets used to that and gets desensitized. So yeah, that is it. Here are the references. They'll all be in the description below. Please let me know if that is interesting, if you have learned anything, and if you have any ideas, questions, concerns, or whatever the case is, if you want to have a conversation, don't hesitate to hit me up in the comments below. I will respond, and thank you for watching. Thanks for the support. This is Brad Cato, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.